Hello, this is Robert Rochelle with D3VBWest.com. I'm going to use this platform to unveil my top 20, my preseason top 25. You can always go to the website, D3VBWest.com, and see an article that's posted there with some different information um, along the same lines. Um, on the screen, you'll see that I've got picks 21 through 25 displayed. Uh, at 21, we start with Wesleyan, uh, followed by Trinity, then Aurora, DePau at 24, and then Babson in the 25th spot. Um, I really like all of these teams. Obviously, they wouldn't be on my rankings if I didn't. Uh, with Wesleyan, uh, they had that great run to the Elite Eight. Uh, they lost to uh, uh, Juniata in five, uh, and they're pretty much returning their entire team. They only lose 11% of their points to graduation. Uh, they finished 20-6 and six last year. I don't see any reason why they can't repeat their success. Uh, Trinity is a little more dicey for me. Um, they're losing 38% of their points. They're losing almost half of their digs. Uh, it's, a, it's a good program. It's one that typically uh, re restocks really easily, uh, and that's why I still have them in the top 25. Um, but we'll see. We'll see this year what happens. Uh, Aurora had that great run. They made it all the way uh, to the Elite Eight, and uh, they lost to Calvin in four. Um, I think last year they finished the rankings at six. I think that's a little high. That was based on that great run. Um, this year they're going to lose their setter. They're going to lose half their digs. They're going to lose 36 of their, uh, percent of their points. I see kind of a drop-off for Aurora, um, and uh, we'll see if they can actually stay in the top 25 this year. I have them there. Um, DePau had a great run uh, at the end. They made the NCAA tournament as an at-large. Uh, they ended up beating Hope in five, and they swept Wittenberg. Um, I, I think they're going to be even better this year, a better regular season, I should say. And uh, I have them at 24. And then Babson's my, my 25th team. They were 26-9 uh, and nine last year. Uh, they also made it to the Elite Eight. Um, it's nice when a region gets two regionals like New England did last year. I won't go into that too much, but... Uh, they, they had a great run until uh, they ran into Eau Claire and uh, got swept. But uh, they're returning. Um, they're only losing 23% of their, of their points to graduation. So they're in a position uh, to, to capitalize on what they did last year and uh, see if they can duplicate it. Uh, now we'll move on to the next five. Looking at the next five, starting at number 16, we have St. Benedict, uh, followed by Ohio Northern, Carthage, Stevens Point, and then at 20, we have Birmingham Southern. Uh, St. Benedict finished 26-8 and eight last year out of the Central Region. They had an at-large bid. They made it all the way to the Regional Final where they lost in four sets to Eau Claire. They're losing about 36% of their points to graduation. I might have, now that I look at it, I might have dropped them down a couple, a couple ranking places, but they're definitely good enough to be in the top 20 this year. Ohio Northern wasn't ranked last year. They finished 22-8 and eight out of the Great Lakes. I actually had them preseason last year at number 10. So again, I guess I'm jumping on the Ohio, Nor Ohio Northern bandwagon. They did win the OAC. They did make the NCAA tournament as a, a Pool A bid, and uh, they promptly got swept by Whitewater. They're returning pretty much their whole team. They're losing 10% 10, 10 of their points. They should be strong, and I expect them to be ranked this year. Uh, Carthage is a team that I got to see beginning of last year. I just really enjoyed them. I enjoyed the way they play. I was surprised they ended up not, I mean, they went 21 and 11. Um, I thought that there were some, some matches there that they should have pulled out that they didn't. Um, they did get an at-large bid. Uh, it was a little bit of a surprise to me, but I was happy for them. They ended up getting swept in the first round by Wittenberg. Uh, now, this is a team that's going to be returning, again, virtually their entire team. They lose 7% to graduation points. Um, this is a team that I expect to, to do very well this year. Stevens Point, another team, uh, they weren't ranked at all last year. They didn't even receive votes. They finished 18 and 16 out of the Midwest. They did not make the NCAA. This is the first team that we're, we've come into that uh, did not make the NCAA tournament. Uh, they're playing in a tough WIAC um, conference, but they're returning everybody. As far as I can tell, they're not losing anyone to graduation. Um, they've got a tough conference to get through. That's going to be the main thing that may trip them up, but I really like their chances this year. And then at 20, I've got Birmingham Southern. They went 25-7 and seven last year out of the South region. They did receive an at-large. That was the team that really in the last two weeks of the season 
beat everybody. And by everybody, I meant some elite teams. And really, uh, they were one of the first teams that, I, in my selection process, that I that I gave an at-large bid to. Uh, they're only losing 15% of their um, of their uh, points to graduation. They should come back as strong as ever. And um, I've got them at number 20. Now we'll look at the next five. Here we have teams uh, from 11 to 15. Barry starts us off at 11, followed by Ithaca, Wisconsin Whitewater, Washington St. Louis, and then at 15, Christopher Newport. Uh, Barry was 26 and four last year out of the South. They won the SAA. They uh, made it to the second round in the NCAA tournaments, losing to Mary Harden Baylor in four sets. They're losing 35% of their points, uh, but otherwise they're coming back strong. Uh, this is a really under the radar team that um, has a chance to break into the top 10, I feel, this year. Uh, Ithaca, uh, 21 and 8. Uh, they're out of the New York region. They kind of get the benefit here in my rankings uh, because they are out of the New York region and they're probably the favorite. Well, not probably. They are the favorite to make it out of the New York regional. Um, they made it as an at-large last year after getting upset in the Liberty League final. They made it all the way to the Elite Eight where they ended up losing to the national champions Emory in four sets. Uh, they are losing 44% of their digs, 29% of their points, so they do have a little bit of loss, but just because they're playing such a, a weaker region, uh, I have them here. Uh, Wisconsin Whitewater comes in at 13. They were 25-8 and eight last year out of the Midwest. They got an at-large bid. They ended up losing to Calvin in four sets. Um, they also, similar to Ithaca, have got kind of the same kind of losses, 40% digs, 23% points. But again, this is a team that always seems to be ranked and uh, will do so again this year, I believe. Uh, one of the teams I'm kind of fearful of is Washington St. Louis. Um, I don't think I'm lying when I say they're one of two teams that have been ranked um, in every poll since its inception. Um, they're out of the Central. They, made the at they had an at-large bid last year. They ended up losing in the second round to Illinois West uh, Wesleyan in four sets. The problem here is they're going to lose 52% of their points to graduation. For, for almost any other program, this would pretty much drop them out of the rankings for me, but I just can't do it with this team. Uh, they're going to retool, they're going to restock, and they're going to be ranked again. Um, so it's just a matter of where they're going to fall. Uh, ending up here with Christopher Newport at 15, uh, they were not ranked last year. They did receive some votes. They finished 26 and 6. They're out of the Mid-Atlantic. Um, they won their conference and they made it to the second round in the NCAAs, losing to uh, Thomas Moore in three sets. Uh, so this is one of those teams that's returning almost all their players. They're only losing 9% of the points. And so they're in a good position to not only get ranked, but also uh, do some damage in the NCAA tournament this year. And now we'll take a look at the next five. Now we take a look at the bottom half of the top 10. And for the most part, I think all of these teams have a shot at the national championship this year. Uh, starting at 6, we have Chicago, followed by Emory, Mary Harden Baylor, Wittenberg, and then at 10, we've got Wisconsin Eau Claire. Uh, going back to Chicago, they went 29-5 and last year. They're out of the Midwest. They were the number one regionally ranked team out of the Midwest. Uh, they play in the tough UAA conference where they got an at-large bid. Uh, they made it to the second round when they ran into Aurora and lost in five sets in one of the more shocking matches of the tournament. Uh, they uh, are losing 31% of their points, um, so if they can make up the loss of that, uh, they should be right back here in the top 10. Uh, Emory, the national champions, the defending national champions, they went 30-6 and six last year. Uh, they're out of the South. Uh, they won the UAA. Um, I have them dropping down here uh, because they lose their setter and they lose about 47% of their points uh, due to graduation. So uh, Emory is one of those programs, even though they're approaching the 50% mark, they're over the 45% mark, uh, it's usually a red flag for me. Um, this is a program that's very deep, has got a lot of people on the bench that are ready to step up, that recruits very well. Um, so I, I think they're going to be in the top 10, it's just a matter of wh where exactly they end up. Um, Mary Harden Baylor, number eight. Um, honestly, um, I've got three teams in the top ten uh, from the West. I would have Mary Harden Baylor higher if they weren't out of the West, but in the end, when it comes down to the final rankings, uh, we know there's probably only going to be one or two West teams in the top ten. 
Um, but still, this is another under the radar team. They won the ASC last year. Um, they made it all the way to the regional finals where they lost to Emory. Uh, they got swept by Emory. Um, but this team uh, is, is returning everyone. They have a 0% loss across the board in every statistic um, due to graduation. So they're returning everyone. They made it to a regional final. Um, they, they're close. They're really close. We've got uh, Wittenberg at number nine. Uh, they were ranked fifth last year. They finished 25-3 and three out of the Great Lakes. Uh, they made the regional finals as well. They lost to Calvin in a great match that went five sets. Um, they've got a lot of losses too, but this is another program that, that, that reloads uh, instead of rebuilds. They're going to lose their setter, they're losing over 50% of their digs, and they're losing 41% of their points. Um, but still, I, th I think they're going to be here. I think they still have a chance as long as they can find those replacements. And then at number 10, we've got uh, Wisconsin-Eau Claire. They went 33-4 and four last year. They're in the Midwest region. Uh, they won the WIAC, and they made the Final Four last year where they lost to Calvin in five sets. It was probably the best match of the championship um, last year. Um, they're going to lose 32% of their points. If they can make that up, then they're primed to make another run again this year. All right, now we're going to look at the top five. And the secret is out. I've got Claremont Mud Scripps winning the national championship this year. Here are the top five teams. We got, uh, as I said, CMS, followed by Calvin, Johnson and Wales, Rhode Island, Colorado College, and then Juniata at number five. Uh, let me start with Juniata at number five. They went 28 and four last year. They're out of the Mid-Atlantic. Um, they made the final four. They ended up losing to Emory in three sets. Um, they are, they've got some losses. They're losing one of their setters. They ran a two setter set for the most part last year. They um, are losing 43% of their digs. They're losing a little over 20% of their points. Uh, it's another big program, another program that should be able to replace those losses and should finish comfortably in the top 10 this year. Uh, Colorado College, another team out of the West, uh, another team that I really enjoy, enjoy watching. They're 32 and three last year. Uh, they made it to the second round. They ran into Emory where they were swept. Um, they're returning virtually everyone. They're losing 22% of their points to graduation. But other than that, um, they're returning their squad. Um, Johnson and Wales uh, out of New England. They went 33-2 and two last year. Uh, they made the regional final where they were upset by Wesleyan in four sets. Of course, that's, uh, that's the husband and wife uh, coaching against each other. Um, in that matchup, uh, but uh, Johnson and Wales basically returns everyone. I think they lose like 2% in, of their points to graduation. So uh, this team's going to this team's going to rule the New England region yet again. And like I said, I think New England's a little tougher this year, which is going to help them. And they're actually getting uh, to play some of the other stronger teams um, outside the region this year. So I think um, I think Johnson and Wales has got a shot this year. Um, Number two, just like last year, Calvin. Uh, they went 33-2. and two. Uh, They lost in the finals to Emory. Um, they, they've also got some losses. They've got 45% of their digs going, 29% of the points. That's mainly Anna Camp, uh, the last of the Camp sisters at Calvin. So the rest of the world can rejoice uh, until, I guess, the grandchildren find their way there. And then at number one, um, and this wasn't easy, I've got Claremont Mud Scripps. Uh, they went 27-4 and four last year. Uh, they only made it to the second round. They ran into Eau Claire. They lost in four sets. Uh, but they're returning everyone. They have a 0%, like I said, um, uh, loss across the board. I'm not sure I said that, but I am saying it now. And, um, you know, they, they did really well last year while also suffering from a lot of injuries. So they've got virtually everyone back, and then they're healthy at least right now, and if they can stay healthy, if uh, they can improve uh, their hitting efficiency. That's my really only concern with CMS is that they, they weren't uh, ranked really high in uh, hitting percentage last year, um, but um, I think that's going to change this year, and um, they're my pick for the, for the 2019 uh, champions, and we'll see if it plays out. As a reminder, um, you can go to d3vbwest.com. You can find an article on all this. There's a little different information that's there. I dive a little more deeply in a couple of areas. I probably repeat a lot of what I just said, um, but I hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast, video, whatever, 
and um, hopefully I'll do more in the future. And I thank you.